Good day. We are going to discuss, write about, Coulomb's Law. <coughs> and how we can calculate the force between charge objects. Remember, if you and I touch or ground an object, we neutralize it. So that's why it's very difficult for these things to be measured. And that's why we don't have actual labs on it. But that's why we have simulations. All right, so this guy Coulomb, who has his own unit, he gets his own law, my definition of being famous. He did a number of experiments. You're certainly welcome to Google a little bit more about him if you're interested. And he found a couple of things, and it's not much different than what Cavendish and Newton found about masses. Coulomb found similar things about charges. Basically that if you have more charge, you have more force. And if they are farther apart, the force is weaker. And if they are closer together, they are stronger. So his equation comes up with force is a constant, which he found similar to the way Cavendish found one for Newton, times the value of each charge. Now notice this is just a, a nomenclature, a way that I write it. I use one charge is capital Q, one is lower Q. If you were to look this up somewhere, they might call it Q1, Q2. I would just use it to make them look different because later I'm going to want to talk about a big charge and a little charge, but it doesn't really matter. It's just too cute. Ha <laughs> ha. All right. So one of the things we need to make sure, and I'm going to ask you to highlight this, so pause if you need to, is this electrostatic constant is a number that you're going to have to refer to quite a bit because it is part of the formula. The other thing is it's a little different than gravity because gravity only attracts that forces can attract and repel. So even though we're not going to be overly crazy about the signs on this, if the force is positive, that means that these two charges were either both negative or both positive. That means they repelled. And if the force, I guess that should be a capital F, doesn't really matter, is attractive, that means it's negative. One of these had to be positive, one had to be negative. But again, I'm not going to overly worry about so much about the sign. All right, let's go into the first practice problem here. Grab your calculator. So I have a force. I want to know the force between two electrons. Well, you have to know the charge of the electron. You may have to go back to your previous notes. Remember, an electron is negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th coulombs. And they are 2 times 10 to the negative 8th. We're talking atomic sizes here, so obviously this is small and this is a distance. So Q and Q are electrons. K is the constant. D is the squared. Uh, D is the distance, excuse me. Well, let's figure it out. So F equals 9 times 10 to the 9th. 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th, yes, negative. Negative 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th. Let's get to be a little bit over. And again, these distances have to be in meters. So 2 times 10 to the negative 8th squared. All right, these take a minute to type in. That's for sure. All right, 9, second EE9 times parentheses, 1.6. I'm leaving off the negative because I know negative times a negative is positive. Times, parentheses. I'm doing that because some of yours will mess up if you don't. 1.6 second EE, negative 19 parentheses. Now, I typically hit enter here, so I know that I've taken care of that, and then I divide. Okay, 2 second EE, negative 8 squared. There we go. We get 5.76 and that is correct. Let me just jot it down over here. 5.76 times 10 to the negative 13th. Remember force is still in newtons. Okay, this is a ridiculously small amount of force. Remember a human, as we looked earlier this year, we weigh anywhere from 400 to 1000 newtons, okay, and that's quadrillions more than this. And again, it would be positive. That just simply tells me um, they're repelling. All right, so the next one. A force of negative one Newton, so here's the force. I have two charged objects with equal charge. So basically it's a Q and a Q, and they're separated by 0.1 meter. Determine the charge on the objects, okay? so. F equals K, and in this case, since they're equal charges, I'm just going to call them the same Q, which we know the same as Q squared over D squared. So let's substitute. Negative 1 equals 9 times 10 to the 9th Q 
squared, I don't care if you use capital Q or lower Q, it doesn't really matter, over 0.1 squared. So I'm going to cross multiply and then divide and take a square root, but that negative is going to throw me off and I won't be able to do it. So for right now, the only thing negative means is that it's attractive, like I said up here. So I'm just going to ignore that for right now. And when I figure this out, the Q's, one will be positive, one will be negative. All right, so let's do these. So first I'm gonna cross multiply. So 0.1 squared duh, times one, I know that's silly, divided by nine second EE9 equals, and make sure you're using the shortcut. Let's see if I can get this in here. A lot of us don't know how to do this one. Second square root, second answer. If I pull this back down, there's my answer. So you don't have to retype it in. So Q1 is 1.05 times 10 to the negative six. Q2, just so I label them differently, and I'm gonna move this over, sorry. Coulombs would be negative 1.05 times 10 to the negative six coulombs. All right, well, 10 to the negative six is kind of an important value. That goes into our metric prefixes. I'm gonna, that is micro. So these are, we will write them sometimes as 1.05 micro coulombs and negative 1.05 micro coulombs. Another one that you're gonna run into is little n for nano. That one will happen. Remember, that's 10 to the negative nine. So just for reference, many, 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 many times they're given this way and not in terms of their charge. They'll have the prefix. All right, let's go to example three. So I have a force of 20 Newtons. So there's my force. Here's, oh, look at micro. So here's, we'll call this little q because it's smaller. We'll call this capital Q. It doesn't really matter calculate how far, so I'm looking for the D. All right, so I'm gonna set this up. So it's gonna be 20 equals nine times 10 to the nine. So you don't wanna leave it like this. You're gonna to have to transfer it. Micro means negative six. So this one's 1 1.05 times 10 to the negative six, and this is 32 times 10 to the negative six. Now I know that's improper, but it's not a final answer, so it's okay. Um, you can put it as 3.2 times 10 to the negative fifth if you would like to fix it, d squared. So we do our little cross multiply. The d squared is going to be here. It's going to be this divided by 20 when that works out. So let's work this out here. All right, 9, second of 9 times, I like parentheses, 1.05 second ee, negative 6. These take a while. Get your calculator out and do this with me times parentheses 32 second ee negative six i like to multiply the top and now i'm going to divide by 20. and now i have to take the square root second square root second answer there we go 0.12 meters All right, so the last thing that we're gonna talk about is a little problem with Coulomb's Law because we know that neutrals will attract, but neutral, if you were to put this in a formula with the charge of zero, you would get zero force when in reality it does exist. It's just not something we can calculate. So we're gonna turn this over. We're gonna use the back of the paper. Zoom back out a little bit. And we're gonna draw a little bit. So in the little simulation at, with the electroscope, I'm not gonna draw the leaves, I'm just gonna use circles. If we bring a positive rod, and how do I make a positive rod? I put a bunch of pluses on here, and I make sure there's more than the negatives. When I bring it near an object that is neutral, originally neutral, what happens to the electrons? We saw in the little demonstration, they all shuffle over, all right? So we get this. We get them all lined up on one side. We get a dipole. So this side 
is now negative and negative attracts positive. In the other case, when you the rod was negative, and again, I'm gonna represent it with lots of negatives. Again, we start out neutral, plus, 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 minus, minus, all nice and even spread. But once this comes closer, what happens to all the electrons? They move away. They go to the other side, actually, probably should put them all over there. And again, that makes it a dipole. This side is positive, it attracts, okay? So neutrals attract due to electrons being pushed or pulled to one side making a, and I'm gonna call it a charged, it's not really charged, it's a charged side, also a dipole. Okay. Some people have a term that they call it electrical polarity. Can't calculate the force, but you certainly can observe it. All right, we do have some book work we're gonna do and practice with this formula. Peace.